Yep, we're still doing this. Not any better though. Anyway. Hey everybody, Tim the Tone Priest here. And I was watching the old YouTube. And Terry from D-Lab just put out a video telling us about a shocking experience he had with a Dan Electro amplifier. So this amplifier, like a lot of old amplifiers, has two chassis in it. An upper chassis, I'm getting frame here, upper chassis, and a lower chassis. The upper chassis is mounted to the top part of the cabinet, and that's where your controls are, your jack for your guitar cable, stuff like that. It's got one preamp tube in it. And then there's an umbilical cord that runs from the top chassis to the lower chassis. And that plugs into the lower chassis, and that connects the two together. And the lower chassis is where you have your power and output transformer, your power tubes, your rectifier tubes, and phase inverter. And it looks like it has a couple other um, preamp tubes in it as well. And um, I'll put a link in the description below. It's a short video, but uh, this is very important. Uh, the reason why I'm making this video is I don't want to die by electrocution, nor should you. Anyway, go watch that and come back, and you'll have some more context. But anyway, so Terry explained he was working on this amplifier, and because of the way it was designed, he had the lower chassis standing up, and he went to move it, and he brushed up against the upper chassis, and he got a nice high-voltage whack <laughs> in his hand. And as he mentioned, if, you know, he was holding one chassis with one hand and grabbed the other chassis with the other hand, the current would have went through that kind of path, which goes through your heart, which will, uh, you know, one of those things. And that ultimately leads to cardiac arrest. Um, but I didn't quite understand what, why that was happening, what was going on, but I think I figured it out, and I'm going to share that with you. So um, let's bring up some visual aids, and we'll check this out. Here we go. All right, here is the schematic for a Silvertone model 1335. And I believe this is very similar to the Dan Electro he was working on. So you can see up here, this is the upper chassis. We have our input jacks, our first preamp tube, uh, and our tone stack. And then it goes through this five pin connector, which is the umbilical cord. But what they're also doing here, you see, there's another connection here. It says phonotype jack. This is two input, and this is the input. This is another phonotype jack, basically an RCA jack. And these two get connected. All right. Now, through the magic of computer graphics, we can see here's the schematic here in the red line. This is the B plus high voltage. And I, I haven't, you know, drawn everywhere it goes, just uh, enough to show you how this works. But anyway, we have our high voltage coming out of the rectifier tube. And it goes up here through the umbilical to the upper chassis, and that powers the plates of that preamp tube. Now in green, I have drawn some of the grounds. And if we follow this green wire, we can see that it's connected through the input jacks here. Follows it. And how it gets back to the lower chassis is through this phonotype jack. And it uses the shield of the cable to run the ground from the upper to the lower chassis. And then if we follow it, it goes all the way back here. And here's our ground reference right here. So how did Terry get zapped? So what he said was, is he disconnected this phono jack wire, he was going to inject signal directly into the lower chassis to do his diagnostic process. So he disconnected that, not knowing that that's the only way ground gets from the upper chassis to the lower chassis. All right, so you unplug that, and now you've got all this high voltage looking for a path to ground. And when he brushed up, his hand that was touching both the upper and the lower chassis at the same time, you know, you've got 
300 volts looking for a path to ground his hand connects from here to here which has a reference to ground here so the electricity went through here through his hand to the lower chassis and out end of this story and uh that's potentially fatal boys and girls all right hopefully i explained that well so i think what the moral of the story is here whenever you have an upper chassis and a lower chassis it's probably a good idea to grab out a nice uh one of these guys right here little cable with alligator clips on it and keep them connected uh, connect the upper chassis to the lower chassis what we could also do is you know do a little bit of pre-planning and making sure when whenever we have an amplifier design like that with an upper and lower chassis and umbilicals and stuff make sure that there's always a path to ground from the upper to the lower chassis to the ground reference. Does that all make sense? I hope that made sense. I'm not an electrical engineer. I'm, I'm a shade tree amp mechanic, but uh, we do what we can. All right. Uh, thanks for watching. Be safe out there. Rock on dudes and dudettes. Absolute power corrupting absolutely. Hurry. You haven't much time. End of this story. Done.